Well, here we are Sunday. We're back. Six o'clock, January 3rd. We ain't trying to do nothing but have a good time. We appreciate y'all tuning in and hanging out with us tonight. Big Matt Diamond D's back in the house from a little like, vacation. One. We got one this year, didn't we? Yeah, that's about all I got, man. It's been crazy this year. 2021. 2021. Wait, hold it. Let me Never thought we would ever make it this far, guys. Hope y'all getting settled in tonight. Uh, Hope y'all missed us last week. Not too bad, I guess. Uh, we got plenty of stuff to talk about tonight. Bowl games and things that went on this past week. Some coaching changes. All that stuff's been going on in the state of Alabama. And uh, Derek Henry's probably going to go over 2,000 yards right now yeah, as, we got, as we speak. We got a guy out in the field. Uh, he's clocking that as we speak. Right. One of our field reporters. Yeah, we got, we got, we're we working up into things, guys. We're getting big. Uh, yeah, we're getting big. He's over there. He's in Tyler, Texas, right? Not, no, not Tyler. They're playing in, the Texans are playing in uh, Tennessee. He's outside of Nashville right yeah, now. Yeah, he's eating nachos and hot dogs right now. We appreciate you. And, of course, we appreciate our sponsors. Uh, Kevin's Lawn Care Landscaping, 458-1161. Call Kevin, free estimates, got anything you need to be done in the yard, about anything you need done, period. Mm -hmm. uh, Kevin can get it done. And, of course, Jonathan Kim over at Warrior Gym. We appreciate them. I was out there early this morning working out. 706-5112. Uh, uh, got some new things coming in this year. Uh, nutrition Bar is going to be back up and running soon. And they got a big special right now running on memberships. They can get two people in, go on there on our page, and uh, check out the new sweet deals they got over at Warrior Gym. Rodney Van Pelt watching us. Uh, What's Rodney, up? Rodney, I'm going to come watch some of that championship game at your house, that tradition. He wouldn't let me leave last time I went over. They was, they was playing good? No, they were down. Georgia was beating them 13 to nothing. remember at halftime? And then Alabama started playing good, and he would not, uh, they wouldn't let me leave. Him and Tim Calvert. And Alabama won. 26-23. I don't know what that is. What is that? I don't know. Cast it on TV. Huh. Okay. Thomas well. Cruz, of course, I watch it. What's up, Thomas? How you doing, man? Uh, well, Dean, we had a lot of good bowl games. Um, we did. And my standout game was that Liberty and Coastal game. It was a fantastic game. Yeah, tell us about that. Well, let's see here. It, it started out as, as we all expected it'd be. It was going to be a good game. Um, uh, uh, I didn't get to watch any of it. Yeah. Uh, I was snowed in, and we were watching Miami and the Raiders. Tyron Dupree had a big play. Yeah. He come yeah. in and got to play a good bit toward the end of the game. He plays the special teams mostly. Yeah. He's um, a linebacker, too. Yeah. Right, yeah. he. They had a stand down there. On the, I think he probably had at least three tackles or so. Mm -hmm. They had to stand there on the goal line, and Tyron takes the ball from the guy, and they didn't give it to him. They didn't give it to him. Man, yeah, you I, texted me and told me that. He had the ball. He definitely took it away from him. The guy went down. They they hit him, and he just took it from him. Yeah, that says a lot about him on a team that, where did they go, 10-1? and one, Finished in the top 20, and he starts or plays a lot for them. Yeah. And they start next year. And Willis, their quarterback, which had transferred from Auburn, uh, he was 19 for 29, throw for 210, and he rushed for about 130-something yards on about 20 rushes. Mm -hmm. uh, he's not the most accurate quarterback, I guess, you know, but he does enough in both to to accumulate to, to be a good player. Right. Uh, now, McCall, he had 318 yards. He threw three touchdowns and a pick, and he rushed, he rushed for right at 100. McCall did from Coastal. It just went back and forth all night. We knew coming in when that game got matched up, I thought it was a great matchup. We knew it was going to be a good game. Were you kind of pulling for Coastal? No, I, I couldn't. Just from I mean, just because they didn't have a loss. Yeah, Which Liberty's only lost team to buy two points or one yeah, point at the, the kick, North Carolina State. Yeah, kicked the field goal then the game beat them. Wasn't yeah. It? yeah, yeah. So uh, that was a good game. I'm sure most of y'all watched it. What uh, what something stood out to you or some some well, of our local you, games? ACC we'll, stuff. We'll get into the. Big game. Later, we're going big games. We can't go. I can't go with that. I'd say the most exciting game for me. I gotta be honest with you. Last night, 
I mean, that was that was a good football game. North Carolina and A and E. Yeah. Uh, <coughs> Bob Mond hung in there, and uh, this back a Cheney that came in for Spiller. Yeah. Who went out? He rushed for 140 yards in the second half. Yeah. And you know we I watched a lot of the game, and forever Texas A and M hadn't done much. You know, no. look at the yardage; they'd have 200. We're in the late third quarter. They got 250. Well, Matt, they finished with 457. He had a 76-yard touchdown run. Mond run the offense good. And I will say that North Carolina was without their top backs. Both of them had 1,000 yards, and their top receiver who played 1,000 yards. But they played very admirable. But that was just a great football game. It was. wound up being 41-27. Uh, now, guys, it was tied. If y'all didn't watch, it was tied with three minutes left or so in the game. Yeah, and it winds up yeah. being forty-one twenty-seven. Well, it was twenty-seven twenty actually. Yeah, I you mean, know, I'm watching this guy go to throw a touchdown. The TV priest. So. Oh yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> and, but that this guy you just mentioned, Archie or Archon, the running a back, Johnny, a Cheney. Yeah, he was fantastic. Uh, he was a red shirt freshman, right? No, he's he right out. Of, they say he's a track star. Right out of high school, this young man had a fantastic game and way for them to start out. And uh, he had two hundred twenty-four yards coming in. So Spiller gets hurt. He fills in for him. Second half of a ball game, and that's 140 yards on 12 carries. I, Jimbo had a good game, and, and uh, of course he he got dumped a little bit there. Then you see him running around on the field trying to dump water on him. That was pretty interesting. I got a message from our guy out in the field. Uh, Derek Henry just became the eighth back to uh, rush for over 2,000 yards in the NFL history in the season. Henry the eighth in his player. in his career. And how many? And do what? This, how many years? I think he's. This may be his fifth year. Yeah, I think that's why I was going to say fifth five. Uh, Eric Dickerson. And when well, you're in the conversation with those guys, you know. Barry Sanders, Terrell Davis, Sean told me. Who was it? Uh, O.J. Simpson, yeah. Eric Dickerson, Sanders, Adrian Peterson. Yeah. A guy named Chris Johnson. Yeah. Not the one from here. We do like him. Yeah. We do like the one for the Chris Johnson, uh, and now Derrick Henry, which yeah, doesn't shock me. No, that, that's a good group to be having your name mentioned in. So congratulations, Derrick Henry. He's a very definitely uh, he's, uh, acclaimed to, to, to that ward. He works hard. I mean, he's a hard worker. You tell that when he's at Bama, and we have some inside people there at work with Bama with strength coach stuff. Yeah. When he had his breakout game against Oklahoma that night, we knew beforehand to keep our eyes open for him. Well, I remember now, that's going to be two years in a row he's led the league. And I remember two or three years ago, it might have been you that said the Hall of Fame material. Yeah. And I was like, it's a little bit too yeah. early to tell. But since that question, I think he's... He's on track to be. I would say that. To if he can stay healthy. Yeah. Uh, Derek I mean, Henry's a, he's a workhorse. He's already led the... He may have led the league three times. I mean, guys, he's getting in there where he's rushed for six or 7,000 yards already. That's amazing. In, in his career. Uh, we'll do uh, a little on college, then we'll go to some local stuff, and then we'll break down all the college well, bowl me. games. Now, we'll talk about Auburn and Sark. That's the big news yeah, about what's happened. Huge. Gus has left. Uh, Brian Harson. he spent seven years at Boise State, 69 and 19. He won three Mountain West Conference championships out there. He was a quarterback at Boise at one time. The more I look at that higher, the better I think it may have been, 69 and 19. Uh, and he re he replaced Gus at Arkansas State before going to Boise. Uh, now the Tigers are going to finish the year off six and five. Mm -hmm. Six and five. Yeah, they didn't have a great game the other day, but they did have some players out. Yeah, uh, and we'll, I got some more on that game later. I've watched it pretty close again, even today. Mm -hmm. uh, and Steele, Kevin Steele is done at Auburn. He's no longer a uh, fired employee at at Auburn University. Well, let me ask you something. I thought he was. Hey, Neil Carley, how you doing? Good. See, uh, I thought he was pretty much a fan favorite down there. Um, yeah, he was backdooring Gus and had been for some time. Mm. Harston, Har how's it, what's his name? Harrison. Found that out? No, that's, this, was, this was had been going on the whole year. Mm -hmm. When Kevin got there, he wanted to be the head coach. This is from in, some information I got from some people that I know that went to school down there. Mm -hmm. He wanted the head coach job, and they knew that Gus, they'd already talked about letting him go, maybe. So Kevin had been already talking to the boosters and to the boosters and Loud and all those guys trying to pump some money in this and get to the AD. 
And the AD just said, no, we're going to put out a committee. We're going to go get us a coach. So Auburn did the right thing. And I know a lot of Auburn fans that are excited about the hire because they didn't let the boosters dictate what they did. And two, with Kevin Steele being gone, it feels like it's more um, open for uh, Coach Harrison there to have his own crew to come in mm -hmm. and not be controlled and pulled around right. down there on the sideline by all the boosters. Right. So good luck well, to all of them. I hope they do better. Uh, they're going to have to get on the recruiting trail because they need some defense players. That, uh, they just That tells me that uh, the man Gus had a rough year. You know he knew that was going on, I'm sure. Uh, he had he to have a gut, gut feeling. He's not stupid, you no. know. Uh, he's a good play caller. I don't think he's just he's just not a good head coach. Mm -hmm. He's not a quarterback developer. That's, he's right. just not good at that. Yeah. Uh, and Nick Saban had lots of good things to say about him. And speaking of that, we do have an opening in Alabama for yeah. offensive coordinator. Yeah, we do. On the short list right now, it looks like Jeff Banks, the tight end special teams coach there at Bama now, may be the one. He's mm -hmm. been there since 2018. Uh, Charles Huff, he's at Bama now. He he was the running back coach at the Bills for a little stint of time. Mm -hmm. Uh, <clears throat> and Hugh Freeze is the name that's going to be thrown around. Graham Harrell, uh, he played as quarterback, quarterback for at Texas. the Packers and the Jets. Uh, he's at USC now. He quarterback Texas Tech back a long time. Yeah, ago. that's going to be a name out there. Another name. Don't laugh. It may be weird. Mm -hmm. Tom Herman. Oh gosh, I think that'd be a great. So hire. we we swap. We send him our OC to be head coach. Heck, I would be ecstatic. If I'm Tom okay Herman with was the OC uh, at Alabama. What do y'all think? Yeah, what do y'all who y'all like to be the new OC at Bama? But now remember, I put this out earlier the other day. You know, with knowing who we have mm -hmm. on the bench that's going to be coming in next year, mm -hmm. you need somebody that's going to fit that style of yeah. football that we're going to be playing now because we don't have a Mac Jones, and that kind of football is not going to beat Alabama next year. Right, right. It's going to be a little different. Of course, you'll have Michi and Billingsley, and I don't know if Forrest all's back, but you got still got some good receivers, but not game breakers like Smith and Waddle, and Judy, Ruggs, I wouldn't think. Michi is good. Yeah. Michi, I don't know how y'all pronounce it. Yeah. But, uh, It'd be interesting. I don't... Bolden, he'll be back. I don't see Hugh Freeze leaving Liberty as a head coach. He said he's comfortable there to come to be OC. Uh, not unless he wants to get back in the SEC, and everybody knows that Tuscaloosa is obviously, it was the hospital during the Civil War that took on Civil War troops. Obviously, mm -hmm. it's still a hospital because they're, they're helping people yeah. uh, heal their self-proclaimed uh, instances that they've got into. Like Sarkeesian had some off-the-field problems, you know. Thomas Krusik said Matt Patricia, that used to be the, he used to be the D.C. at New York. England Patriots, right, Thomas? And was the Detroit Lions head coach? Yeah, I remember he was at Detroit. Got a beard. That. Yeah. Yeah. Looks kind of like one of the Duck Dynasty guys. Yeah. Now, the ball, he was, he'd been here before, too. Yeah, yeah, he's good. I, I, Herman, man, that'd be great. So if we, we swap around there, we'll we'll see what Herman happens. Herman went 32-18 and 18 in Texas. I mean, and never lost a bowl game. But I read in the paper that they said he never beat Oklahoma, and he lost six times to unranked teams. Yeah, that's kind of what got Gus in the hot seat, losing those mm -hmm. games and playing really too close to some unranked teams and going to the ball game and just not playing well at all. But I will say this about Herman. How many times did they upset somebody? I mean, they upset Georgia in a bowl game, which I know people are going to say Georgia didn't want to be there, but that's not really mm -hmm. an excuse. Uh, they hammered Colorado this year in a bowl game. Uh, you know, I don't. he had a good quarterback down there. It's a dangerous job. I mean, they're expecting you. You come in and win, or you're gone. Yeah. I mean, they're, they're wanting to put trophies on the shelf, national titles. Yeah. Well, Texas used to be more of a powerhouse before our time. I mean, when we, uh, when I was growing up, they were good, but they were not great. Yeah. And then you had that stint with Vince Young and them in there mm -hmm. when Mac Brown was there. But I think maybe in the 70s, maybe somebody can tell me, I think they were very Earl Campbell prominent. or... Yeah, Campbell, maybe even before that. You know, I don't ever remember. I remember Texas beat Alabama in a bowl game in like the early 80s. And yeah, I remember you know, crying about it. Speaking of Texas, <laughs> you know, Major Applewhite, he's out there somewhere. He, he, I don't know where he is now. Uh, he was Alabama's first OC right, and I, under Saban. So that, he, may be, he may be on the list too. I'll put him on there. He could be. 
He could be. He's at Houston. Is he there? I don't think he's there now, but I think it's where he wound up last. I lost well, him. Well, I'd like that. I'm excited about that. Uh, Tom Herman. Yeah, that, that's a possibility. We can put him on the list there. And, uh, he's at Houston. Yeah. Applewood is. Is he the head coach? I don't know. I think so. I, now, think, I think he took a guy with him. They went out there. He took so a guy to run the offense. There's he was been so coach. much swapping around. Now, Herman was at Ohio State yep. and went to Houston, right? Yeah. And then to Texas. Yep. Is that right? Yeah. I mean, there's so much swapping around. And then, you know, uh, the Coach Brian Harrison. Brian. I got to remember that. Brian. I keep, I keep wanting to call him Ron or something for some reason. <laughs> Ron. Ron Harrison. Ron Bergen. <laughs> He, uh, you know, he swapped for Gus when Gus left Arkansas State. He took that spot. It's kind of weird. He's now he's taking his spot at Auburn. Mm. I, I think they probably. I'm sure they wanted to go after Hugh Freeze or somebody, a bigger name. But they're gonna have so much money left out there to pay Gus. This is Apple Watts at South Alabama. Okay, I knew he was at Houston. I didn't think he was still there. Um, so we'll see how the tree works out. And good luck to Auburn. They better get on the recruiting trail because they need some players. Yeah, yeah um, they've got some good young players. Yeah. We'll, uh, we'll dive into local, just mention some stuff that happened here in the area. We like to cover uh, the kids and give them some light. And, of course, hats off first to Coach Howard. Oh, yeah. Cherokee County Coach of the Year. Well-deserved. Yeah, very well. Coach uh, Howard, congratulations. We we, uh, we know the guys work hard out there, and he's got a good staff, works with him. He gives them a lot of credit. 12 and 2. Uh, had a good year. I look for them to have a good year next year. I would think so. They've yeah. got some. You know, we'll get into that later, but yeah. as you'll see later, they've got some key players back. Yeah, sure. Uh, well, we'll say about their, they played a, a tournament, Cleveland County, like a Christmas thing. Mm -hmm. uh, the boys and girls combined for 23 threes, as, uh, Gardens, as yeah. it had been reported. Yeah, it's just amazing. In one game, in one day. Yeah, the boys won 69 to 32. Uh, Weston had five threes, mm -hmm. eight rebounds, two assists, two steals, and block, went up with 20 points. Pope had three threes. He went up with 10 points and like nine rebounds. Riley had two threes, had eight points, six assists. Mm -hmm. And Kim and Jacob Welsh and uh, D'Angelo Wright, they all had seven or eight points amongst herself. Mm -hmm. but they'd also swept Ramburn right before that also. So they won that tourney, huh? Yeah. Now the girls had 10 threes up here. They won 73 to 29. Uh, Neely Welsh had 13 points. She hit two threes herself. And uh, Atkinson and Jarrett, and Abby Woods, they all had several threes apiece herself. Uh, Sarah Kate and uh, McKay kid, girl, nine points. She had five rebounds. Ace Austin, eight points, ten rebounds, nine assists, four, wow. it's two blocks, and uh, four steals. And uh, Miss Olivia Law had seven points. It was 50 to, to 11 at the half. And they've got a starter out. Uh, they're just going to keep <laughs> – we're going to get into – I'm gonna get over. We got to get over there. I think they play over. I think they travel to. I think they go to. Yeah, I've got two more weeks of middle school basketball, and I'm gonna be free to do some stuff. So they go off somewhere and play uh, this week. I think Tuesday or Wednesday. Mm -hmm. uh, Cedar Bluff tickets. They're supposed to be coming up on sale. I think they play Tuesday when school they starts. Played back. a little better there before. Yeah, I don't yeah, the know boys how are, they did Tuesday. Boys had been getting. Getting, got, uh, playing yeah. better, coming together more as a team. Now the Lady Warriors over there, they had took a hard loss to Plainview, which is there's no shame in that. No, uh, they're, that program's really good. Fifty three to thirty eight at the Gunnersville tournament. They play at Alexandria Tuesday. Mm -hmm. uh, now the Sandrock girls, they had a win over Boaz, thirty five twenty eight. Uh, Henderson girl had twelve points and ten rebounds. She's back. I thought she may be. That, the talk I'd heard that she was gonna was out. For a while, but maybe she just got hurt in that one game. Now, listen, me girl, which is um, Hunter's little sister. I know Hunter. Mm -hmm. He worked with us at the store for a little while, and uh, now he's working. I think he's working on chicken farm somewhere, doing some hard manual work. Yeah, that is. Uh, Hunter's a good kid. I enjoyed working with him. Uh, so his little sister had 11 points, four rebounds, two steals, and assist. And the Miss Brown had 12 rebounds and two steals. Um, they're playing, get, they're, coming they're coming together, together at yeah. a good time of the year. Uh, the seventh, the girls, the Sandrock, will go to Westbrook. Now, Piedmont boys canceled basketball until January 12th. They're, really? Yeah, they called it off. I don't huh, I COVID, did not know that. COVID concerns and whatnot wow. going on, so they're going to be out. Um, very, very interesting. Through the so week. they haven't played a game. Mm -mm. 
I don't know much about Piedmont basketball. Since Tommy Lewis left, I haven't heard much. I mean, I'm sure they're still good. You know, he has some good teams there. Yeah. But uh, I don't know much about them. How about the All-State players? You know, you had some names. Y'all down just kids right now here you close. you got what teams? Yeah, I got some a bigger list of like what positions or something. Okay. But. Uh, well, locally, All-State players. Okay, we'll start with uh, Gelsville, DJ Lee. Riley Mitchell. Now, this isn't necessarily first, second, or honorable mention. It's just they made the All-State team. Uh, Spring Garden had Landon Goins, Riley Kirk, Weston Kirk, Chaz Pope as a DB. Goins made it as a punter. Mm -hmm. uh, Riley Kirk, obviously, as a quarterback. Weston as an athlete. Welsh as a linebacker. And Cooper Austin as a wide receiver. Mitchell made it as an old lineman. DJ Lee made it as a DB. D back, yeah. He had, had six interceptions. A lot of interceptions, yeah. Uh, Nas Diamond uh, made it as a D lineman. Whit Johnson as a, I think he was a skilled athlete. Yeah, it was, yep. Ramsey, running back. Uh, and Jay Watts made it as a lineman. And yep. I, I don't, I mean, I don't believe I know Jay Watts. Do yeah, you know Jay I, Watts? He may be. I just don't know all the kids. I know those that I know from coaching when they were little, like, of course, Nigerius and them mm -hmm. and Whit and Walker Pruitt and yeah. Isaac Hunter. You know, I know all them kids. And, of course, uh, Slade and, you know. Right, But right. some of them I don't know all of them. Well, now, he missed most of the year. They are 4 way school. There's, there's a lot of kids over there. Oh, yeah, there are. There are. And uh, Cedar Bluff had two. Corey T made it on the O-line. And uh, Ombre Leak, I'm assuming he made it as a DB. Defensive, yeah. 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 Um, so congratulations to all yeah. those guys. Yeah, Marcus, he had uh, all county. Yeah, he made all county in I all was, area. I was uh, really proud of him to take on a new role. and. Um, yeah, he had a great year. Yeah, just he did. take it on, have about 60 tackles. Had an interception, was high of his life, he said. Yeah, yeah, he loved <laughs> that interception. <don't laughs> hey, they were, you know, I didn't have many, but they were exciting. Getting yeah, an interception. I'm proud I don't of know what the deal was with it. But. I'm proud of them. We had a lot of. Um, Guys play a lot of new positions this year, mm -hmm. and uh, hats off to all the kids over here at my play. school here at Cedar Bluff. And that'll be it for me. I won't, uh, I can't be biased anymore a little bit because my son plays. Yeah. So we'll just uh, next year's going to be interesting. I'll be I'll be around a lot more. I'll be at Center Spring Garden. I may be up in Etowah somewhere on Friday night. Yeah, yeah, you can do that. Though. Yeah. Now Luke Welsh was AW. ASWA lineman of the year also. That's another mm -hmm. accolade. Congratulations, Luke, on wow. that. And uh, we talked about him playing in the North-South game. He played yeah, very he well. Played well uh, the 4A, this, the ones that you'd mentioned, Ramsey and, uh, of course, Watts and Nigerius. Mm -hmm. and the coach of the year for 4A was Larry Strand. You kind of know Larry somewhat from yeah, being around uh, it. Yeah, I've seen him at some clinics and stuff. So and he's a real nice guy. Yeah, he is. He's gone to three state championships with two different schools. It's a genius man. But finally won one. Yeah, we're proud of Coach Strand. He's he works hard at what he does. Uh, 3A, the quarterbacks, uh, of course. Who you think is going to be Jack quarterback? Hayes. Right, yeah. of course, and of course Calhoun. Now the Dalton kid from Fife uh, made those big catches down there. Mm -hmm. Caleb right. Lyles from Fife, the big lineman. He was in the South game also with mm -hmm. uh, Levi and with Luke uh, representing the North on defense. Of course, Coach Smith's boy Sean. Yeah, he had a good year. Uh, the Bell kid, Landon Smart, and of course the Foster kid. And, uh, yeah, and Ike Rao, of course, he was athlete, athlete. for the 3A. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now, the second team looked like running backs was Johnson and uh, Elijah Johnson. Blake Sparks on defense from Consul. Wow. He, he had like 150 tackles. Yeah, 160. Buddy. Yeah, it was a lot. Uh, honorable mentions was Austin Estes, Piedmont, and uh, Stiefel from Fife pun as punting. Now, Estes was a good ball player. Oh, yeah, he man. Well, we've enjoyed watching them play this year. Yeah, we did. Watching them play over the years, you know, and mm -hmm. growing, and, and uh, you just see them getting better every year. Who got the three A coach of the year? I didn't even write it. Did it was Benefield no, it? it was uh, Montgomery Catholic. Oh, okay. He got it. Two uh, A was, of course, you mentioned about Cooper, and uh, of course he's a junior. He'll be coming back. Yeah, Cooper yeah. Austin and Luke Welsh. We know he'd got second team defense. Chaz and Weston punter. You talked about Landon. And uh, 1A was, of course, just the kids you'd already mentioned. Uh, Luke Carrison, Valley Head, we'll have to mention him. We have a few people from Valley Head that watch a little bit. Mm -hmm. He was second team and Jordan Burt, the quarterback. He quarterback, was, I don't think. He was, uh, he was fun to watch. Yeah, he's a good player. Yeah. 
And of course, I'm Bray, and then mentioned was Bryson Morgan, also from Valley Head. So that's kind of local stuff. Uh -huh. uh, we'll get that's through some uh, of that. Well, I'm proud of that's 14 kids. A lot of kids around here that work hard, and it's good for them to get their names thrown out there. Mm -hmm. Even if you're a mention, guys, don't take that as a knock. It is not. Oh, Your hard work has been recognized, and everybody can't get something. Honorable you know? mention is all state. It's honorable mention all state. Yeah. And I mean, a lot of people don't get that. Right, yeah. That uh, meant that they thought you were good enough to at least get say your, your name. name. Yes. Yep. There's, there's nothing to hang your hats about. Uh, and uh, congratulations to uh, Piedmont and Fife. What a heck of a game year this was and a game they played. And I am assure you there will be another game played between them next year. Now, I don't know what uh, you had to do in the early 80s to be honorable mention, but uh, there was a guy that played for Collinsville named Travis Jackson. They called him Action Jackson. Action Jackson. Played in the 80s. Come down here to Cedar Bluff one time. Tie ball game, end of the ball game. He kicks a 30 or 40 yard field goal, wins it. Hmm. And, uh, you know, he's just a legend. And I go look on the Alabama history website. He's honorable mention all state. <laughs> and Cedar Bluff didn't have, Cedar Bluff did not have an all state player. Yeah, I remember looking. From Donnell, from John Barnes in, seven, er, in 78. Mm -hmm, 77, yeah. And Curtis Reese and some of them until Donnell Smith in the 80s. And you know, it's five years. So, not taking any way away from the kids now, but you must have just really had to burn it up the woods well, to make an all state team. In, in those times. Of course, there wasn't as many classes. Right. There was, and two, that's when um, Valley Head and them was, was slinging around up there and winning a lot of football. Oh, yeah. You know, yeah. that early 80s and then Sand Rock, they went on a tear up there. So that may have been why we didn't get accolades because of our region was Daggum Valley Head and Sand right. Rock. That's true. Jesus Christ, that's man. That, that's the first two All-States I remember was, well, Don L and then Tony Crane and David Blevins. And, uh, you know, we've had a lot since then. But uh, you know, maybe they lacked stuff. I mean, I, I almost think they were being a little too rough on some of that. What? You know? uh, what year was Valley Head? 81? They won in 84. Four. And San Rock won in 85. 85, yeah. And that was the year that... Then Collinsville won in 83. So, you know, That's we're in their country. areas. Right, yeah. No, Collinsville. Collinsville went real deep in 83. Let me rephrase that. And that's the year... Uh, our, our closest game they they had, uh, was, Valley Head had, was against us. Yeah, and it's also San Rock. Yeah. You know, seven to six down here. Mm. Manny Hutchins, oh tough. Oh tough. <laughs> uh, let's, we'll talk about, we'll break back into the college stuff yeah, now. Yeah, let's get back We'll talk that. about our bowl picks and kind of how we oh, did. Yeah, how we do. I didn't do too good, I don't think. I think we, 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 we all miss Clemson. And everybody that says they picked Ohio State. I don't State, know anybody that picked Ohio yeah, State. Yeah, I don't, uh, I wouldn't, I just can't believe you if you said you picked Ohio oh, State. God, what a, what a game. We'll get yeah. into that. Yeah, uh, title game is going to be the Lavith in Miami. Bama's going to line up play Ohio State. Uh, Notre Dame, Bama, Notre Dame, Bama expected what we thought it'd be about the yeah. kind of score we thought it would turn out to be. Clemson and Ohio State was not what we thought it would be. Wow. Trevor, uh, I think Clemson loses this game, Dean, on just the facts of. Couldn't gain no yards rushing, could they? Well, yeah, he had minus four rushing. Mm -hmm. And two, he just was not on the field. I mean, every time I looked up, Ohio State had the ball. <laughs> <laughs> Three yards, six yards, seven yards, eight yards, boom, touchdown. Most of their yards were gained in the fourth quarter, most of Clemson's. Yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. They ended up at 444. They probably didn't have 200 at halftime. Man, look at Ohio State, 639. I know. Sermon, wow. Trey Sermon. Yeah. That, who's that? <laughs> That's 500 yards in two games. I had a cotton ball. Um, you picked Florida, I picked Oklahoma, 24-14. Was the last time last time that they played in the Orange Bowl? This was a. I just and brutal. I, I kind of wanted to go Florida, but I think remember I just picked Oklahoma kind of be different. Well, you did right, and <laughs> I probably would have picked if I'd known their top four receivers were out. And we didn't know this. You don't know till like the day of the game or day before. Yeah, because we picked know, this weeks ago. You get in on the pickums, you better just. I don't know. It's just hard to pick. Peach Bowl, January 1st, they played at noon. Cincinnati played Georgia. And yeah, I, that was a great game. I said, now be careful, Georgia, because Cincinnati, may, they're they're not bad, man. I didn't think they would beat Georgia, really, but I, 
they ain't gonna just Georgia wasn't gonna pound on them, and Georgia had to come back late to win the game. Oh, yeah. I done one outside. He kicked the fifty three yard field goal. I done quit and said, well, since he's won this, and I go outside and I come back in and see if he's sitting there. And said, well, oh, Georgia won. I said, ain't no way. <laughs> I gotta say, George Pickens. I had soft to him. He had a fantastic game. They do seem seem to be a little more uh, explosive with Daniels. I know they say a new guy's coming. It's going to be better than Daniels. But I will say this. I think Daniels was better than Bennett. Yeah. But, you know, Bennett wasn't ever supposed to be their quarterback. Jamie Newman was supposed to be their well, quarterback. Well, they got a guy that I watched because I watched a lot of Georgia State Championship games. And I, I, and I shared the scores on the page if you were keeping up with it. And uh, I put some stuff on there if you want to tune in and watch. It was on uh, YouTube TV channel, whatever that was. I watched all of them. It's very interesting. Mm-hmm. Um, that Vandergraaf, uh, Daniels good. just needs to go ahead and leave for right now. He's better right now than Daniels is. Wow, and Daniels is good. I'm telling you, man, his kid's good. They yeah. won the state, the private mm-hmm. sector, whatever, 1A, private uh, over there. Uh, the Wolverines, they look, they dress like Michigan. Oh, really? Uh, Fiesta Bowl, Oregon and Iowa State, we both kind of liked Oregon, but Iowa State pulls out the win to win their first. Did we both pick Oregon? Yeah, their first, what was it? They won their first major bowl game. I, I'm impressed with Iowa State. Yeah. I'm, I'm Coming really, in, remember, we yeah. liked the quarterback play. Uh, their defense looked good. Brock Purdy. Yeah, it looked good enough. We we kind of highlighted them on a few games. We showed them a little love, but I just thought Oregon just be so fast. and They have a good running back. Yeah, too. athletic. Tall, yeah. So, congratulations to Iowa State. Wow. We picked Coastal against Liberty, but, um, you know, our we kind of like I liked Liberty. But yeah, yeah. We I thought was, Coastal would just be too much. Yeah, yeah. McCall I mean, and M's great. I mean, he's, yeah. he's going to rush for 100. He's going to throw for 200 every game. Uh, Liberty just hung around, and Hugh Freeze almost coached himself out of the game right there. It was a controversial coaching decision. Uh-huh. He, instead of taking the knee, he hands it to the running back, and he just kind of takes two steps. Then he goes takes the knee. Uh-huh. Well, they do it again. And for some reason, the running back walks up to the line, and the defense grabs him, and he's like holding his feet on the line, trying not to fall over, and they throw him in the end oh, zone. God. And, uh, yeah, it winds up being a mess. Coach Freeze got lucky. I never want to be in a position where I couldn't score. I don't know why he just didn't take a knee as a quarterback. Why he even hand it off? Right. I didn't right. get that. Yeah, I didn't see that. I, you had talked to me about it, but uh, I did not see that debacle or near debacle. I'll uh, hand it off to you. All right. Then give me the, the A&M, North Carolina. we got to talk about that a little more. All right. Well, A&M, North Carolina. A&M finished with 457 yards. Uh, Mon threw for 232. And the big story was a chain with a chain with uh, 140 yards in the second half. 140 in the second half. 140. And A&M's best receiver only got one ball thrown to it. They scored 21 points in the fourth quarter. Yeah, yeah. I mean, this was a good game, fairly pretty, I mean, all halftime. The game took four hours to watch because it kept showing commercials, TV timeout, flags. Flags, reviews. Uh, But, yeah, uh, North Carolina, like I said, was out. Their quarterback's good. Howell's good. Yeah. uh, Yeah. But he had his best receiver out, and he had 2,000 yards rusher. But those two, that running back that played, man, heck. They got gained them 457 to 324, but now North Carolina, that fourth quarter, I don't know if North Carolina gained a yard. They just tuckered out. They they must, something just happened. They just wore out. You're absolutely right. Uh, some other games. How about the Ole Miss? Lane Kiffin going 500. I know. They had 493 total. That's yeah. not That's not. But that's I don't not a surprise, though. Penix didn't play for Indiana. No. Uh-uh. Uh, but still, that was, good. that was an upset. Mississippi State, 28-26. Yeah, total throw for 200. Oh, at Penix's. Yeah. What about Mississippi State? What about this big brawl after the game? Uh, if you didn't watch the whole game, you wouldn't get it, I guess. Uh-huh. They'd been pushing and shoving and mouthing and fighting. They probably, Tulsa probably feels like Mississippi State shouldn't be there, and they may be there because of the conference they play in. I mean, they right. only won, like, what, three or four games. Three, three, yeah. But these bowls had to be filled. Um well, Mississippi State had 271 total yards. And you said they rushed for 123? Yeah, and passed for 148. Wow. Great balance from uh, Coach Leach there. He, uh... Maybe you're figuring it out. He did not get uh, too many accolades from Herb Street. Herb Street was a little critical of him. He said that he promoted the fight to 
Apparently, he just said that's football, and uh, Herb kinda, Street took issue with I kind of agree. I'm sorry. I'm just different. That's okay. I don't know. I may not be the only uh, anti-Mike Leach guy around. I don't know. It's just hard for me to buy. And I will say <laughs> this. I do think. I don't understand all this tough talk from him. <laughs> you have to poke him on the leg. That's what he does to me. run the football. When I get started on a, about Isaiah Thomas. You remember yeah, that? Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I well, got I mean, fired up you know, about he, that. he puts a kid in the. You just don't like the way he treats kids. He's rough on the kids. He, but then he won't line up and run the football. Yeah, it looks like he figured it out. Uh, well, maybe. Uh, yeah. I think, do think he is a good coach, though. He's just a little odd, and he's. I mean, he they rubs people the wrong. They way. they won twenty eight twenty six. Smith was had throw uh, twenty six completions for three forty seven. They threw two picks and they had four eighty four total. Wow. But they passed for three forty seven. They ran for one thirty. So. It's a good game. What about Kentucky and North Carolina State? Wolfpack. Oh. Hey, A.J. Rose. 23-21. 150 yards. In Kentucky, I heard somebody say this yesterday, that they had not, not ever saw a team be that effective in this day and time as Kentucky was with that little of a passing game. Well, uh, the Rodriguez. For 100 yards, right? Rodriguez kid had two touchdowns. Yeah. Yeah, they do have a good run game. And they yeah. play good defense. Had almost 400 total yards for the day. Yeah, but they only threw for 100. Yeah. They did not have an effective passing game. But, uh, hey, he went 5-6 and six and won his bowl game. And they had a tough schedule. You know, they played Auburn. They played Alabama. Yeah. They played uh, Tennessee, uh, Ole Miss, Mississippi State, you know, which, I mean, I mean, say now Ole Miss pretty good. Well, Lane's going to have them boys. They're going to have an offense. He's just a good play caller. Oh, yeah. I mean, 493, that's one of their lower totals, isn't it? Yeah, it is. <laughs> and Mornay gets Bama, didn't he? Yeah. Oh, gosh. They had 700, 650. Yeah. yeah. And Matt, well, Matt, that's pretty much, I'm looking here. I don't see anything else, really. Uh, West Virginia beat Army. Uh, that's pretty much it on the college. Yeah, team. a lot of four or five. I know four nearly was were canceled, yeah, from COVID and and whatever. Uh, so these Oklahoma games. Oklahoma State beat Miami. They did. Yeah, that Miami. was a, that was a good game. Texas uh, beat Colorado. Yeah, I didn't I didn't follow that. I watched some of it the first of it. I had to work through all this, man. I, I work. I'm not off, and I'm <laughs> if I watch it, I try to catch a few minutes on my phone there. You know, Wisconsin when I'm not beat busy. West Virginia. No, Wake Forest. Wake Forest. I didn't I didn't watch that one at all. But when we had so many players opt out, it's kind of done. It made the season feel weird. Yes, it did. It wasn't a great bowl season, I'll just be honest. With yeah, you. speaking of opting out, Auburn had some players out sick. I heard Tank was transferring. You heard that he was I sick. I heard he had the COVID. Does anybody know on that? I mean, yeah. we can't help what we hear. I heard, her, you know, he's their man, so I was suspect. I just didn't really run the ball, man. I didn't Auburn. really understand him being wanting to transfer unless a new coach coming in. You know. yeah, I mean, you got to play defense. You got to run the ball. Uh, Auburn turned the ball over one time, but they only rushed for about sixty yards. Okay, uh, and, and Northwestern winds up four hundred and fifty-seven total yards. Ramsey connected from twenty-four pass for two ninety-one. Porter had a hundred rushing. Ramsey had fifty rushing. Receivers uh, Rain, Bowen, and Lear all had nearly at seventy. All had a touchdown. Um, Williams and Shaver both run the ball. Had about thirty yards or so. Uh, yeah. Now, Bo ran for, uh, he had 10 carries, about 32 yards. He, he connected on 25 out of 42 passes for about 292. Pretty good. Uh, Cannon and Williams were their receivers that made some plays. So uh, it was 14 to 6 at halftime. Now, I watched the game closely today. I watched it before, then I watched it close today. Mm -hmm. Auburn played with them, and they had. Their main components out of the game. It was not a. It was not a beat down. Thirty-five nineteen is not an indication of the game. Auburn let off. They could give up and quit uh, about ten minutes left in the game. Right. They just kind of quit. Just uh, kind of knew that. Yeah, they just. Well, it was thirty-five thirteen, wasn't it? They they wouldn't. They didn't want to play anymore. And the play column was okay, I guess. I mean, like I said, Bo run around out there for about thirty-two yards. Uh, Bo running the ball in the red zone, I think, would have been more adequate to trying to get them on the board. He missed some key passes here and there, but it wasn't terrible. But offensive line, man, but it's not a surprise. 
it's been that way kind of this year. Auburn's mm -hmm. offensive line has been really sputtery. Yeah, they haven't had a great running game. I mean, Bigsby was a nice surprise, but other than that, uh, defensively, guys, he was the highlight of their running game. Auburn's got to get on the board. They have got to get out and beat the bushes. They've got to get some some pass rushers. They wasn't as good on defense as I thought they no. would be. No, they're going to have to get out there and recruit. So, uh, Coach Brian, he's going to have to. Uh, he's going to have to get out there and beat some bushes and. They gotta get some kids in it on the planes. And they're not gonna be excuse me, they're not gonna be competitive in this coaching change and getting the boosters off the table with them. It's gonna hurt them for a little while, it just is. But uh, they gotta get some kids. <laughs> yeah, yeah. See, I just you know, a lot of people and a lot of Auburn fans are they do have good players, but no, they don't have nowhere near the players that Alabama has. Yeah. And I don't know how you do that with them being in the same state and in Georgia right there. Yep. And Florida's just you know a few hours down the road. It's just tough. Auburn you know, is. That's I'm why I'm actually taking up for them. Yeah, I've told uh, uh, Anthony this. You know, he uh, Chambers. He went to school there, and, and and he he keeps his ear on the ground. And I mean, who wants that job? I don't mean that in a bad way. I mean, God, God, man. No, I mean, I who know. wants to go play Nick Saban every year? You have to play him. Mm -hmm. Every yeah. year you have to. You cannot avert playing the greatest high school coach to, to have coached the game in, in modern time since the late 90s. Right. It's right. him. I mean, and maybe even in all time, he's up there with, with, with those guys. I mean, and you have to play him every year in, a, in, a, in an Iron Bowl, the, the ID, IDK Sportsmanship Award game. You're going to play. And like you just said, recruiting, and that's where it's won at. It's won in the battle of getting on the plane and going to these kids' house and being able to visit. Mm -hmm. And it's just a snowball free for all. Tough, be a tough gig at I Alabama. Mean, you, you just the kids want to come there now. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I mean, they're yanking them in. I mean, you know, and I mean, nobody would argue Bigsby is a good bag. Dan Mullen. He's not in the same league. He's not as highly touted as Najee Harris. No, and he's Bo good. Nicks, who's very good, is he's probably not as highly touted as JT Daniels, and that's what you're having to try to compete against these guys yeah. with. And they want you to win that title. I mean, <laughs> they want you to go out there and beat. Um, and of the last five so, years of the Saban tree of coaches from um, Jeremy Pruitt, Tennessee, Kirby mm -hmm. Smart, Georgia, Lane Kiffin, Ole Miss, mm -hmm. and Dan Mullen, he's at Florida. Well, come on, man. I know. Uh, those, the state is surrounded by Saban disciples. Yeah. And they're all pretty darn good. Mm -hmm. And then you're going to get put right in the middle of that, and you got to play all of them because Auburn plays Georgia regularly. Yeah. yeah. Okay, and with the, what how, how, things happened this year, you had to play all your conference games. So then they're playing Florida. Then they're playing LSU. I know. And then you have to play Alabama. Well, good luck coaching at Auburn. It's just hard. you coach when you don't. And good luck. Nobody, it's, the job's not appealing anymore. No, it's a tough job. It's very tough. Maybe be one of the tougher jobs in the country. I would think so. It yeah. is. I, I mean, I'm just, I'm taking up for Auburn here. Yeah, we well, really it's are. A very, very tough. Job. It's hard, man. Who wants to have to coach Auburn against all them guys? Georgia or Kentucky? <laughs> we won't be at Tennessee right now. I mean, That's some of the best job. coaches in the country are where? The ones I just named. No, yeah, yeah. You got Lane Kiffin lighted up. He put 500 yards on anybody any day. He put a 600 on Bama. Mm -hmm. Dan, 47, that's what they gained. Dan Mullen, are you kidding me? The guy developed Tim Tebow. Yeah, no. no Come good. on. Kirby Smart, probably the best recruiter out of the whole group. And he's a head coach at Georgia. And they're going to be good next year. Oh, yeah. Yeah, Georgia will be. We'll do a look ahead. I'm hoping Auburn is. Before college basketball, after this, and mm -hmm. probably about two or three weeks, I'll, I'll lay out something for us to do a way, way stupid early. <laughs> I'll give you a preview, though. Texas A&M. Well, what do they have back? I swear, if they bring all everybody back. Yeah. And what Bama's losing for seniors. Yeah. Wow, well, look out, guys. This was the best Texas A&M team possibly ever. Speaking of Georgia, possibly. they beat Cincinnati. Mm -hmm. uh, Daniels throwed for 392 yards. Pickens had 135. Here's Smith, 55. Jackson had three catches, 47. Now, defense, so Walker and Dean, mm -hmm. some of the Todd Skin folks, so they, had, they both had six tackles. Uh, now, Cincinnati only had 305 total. Georgia went for about 450 total. The, uh, Cincinnati's quarterback's Ryder. very elusive. Oh, man, he's terrible. I mean, how you get that guy yeah. down? Wow. He threw for 206, and 
Uh, he ran for 46. No, he, he, he's good. Ford had 100 yards rushing. Their two receivers, Young and Wild, both had 40, 50 yards. Um, Georgia just hung on and, and won the game, and uh, Zamir only had 40 yards, but Pickens was the guy who held him in this game. Dang. Pickens had a good game. He, he did. did. And he shows flashes of brilliance. And they come back to win that one. Cincinnati was just and, beating uh, them all day. He was a big reason why, and I'm proud of him. He's had a odd career, to say the least, but, boy, he's done good in the bowl games. That's two straight bowl games he's done. Yeah. Good. He's just had some – he's had some, what do you call it, Meltdown moments. He you does. Know, he got in the big fight, and then he yeah. squirted the water on the player. I don't know why he does that. Yeah, he just he needs some maturation. He's he's emotional. Yeah, to say the least. Yeah. Now, what about Florida, and Oklahoma? What, what was your takeaway from? Oh my! Well, I just think that, uh, <laughs> Florida. I just think not having those players killed them. Now, would they have made a difference? I would think it would have been a lot closer. Yeah. And I actually thought Florida was going to get back in this when yeah. it was 17-13, but Rattler was just too much, man. They had 684 yards, Matt. They threw. They rushed. Hold on now. Look down at the bottom. Tell them what they rushed for, Dean. 435. I thought I was wrong. I had to look at two different places to make sure somebody write it down wrong. 435? You ain't going to win the game. Now, I don't know why I had Florida had oh, out God, of man. But I know they revamping some of that staff. They did not fire Grant. I know a lot of people are, are calling for his head. But now I think him and Mullen are pretty tight. Yeah. I mean, they've been together quite a while. And uh, I don't think he's just going to up and say, all right, you're done. I mean, he's going to give him a chance. Well, Gators rushed for 250, throwed for 271. That's a good balance. Yeah. Right here is the key loss right there. And three interceptions. Trask. Uh, yeah. Well, i got to have my marker here, man. Early. And yeah. that could have been because of the receivers. Three picks. Um They'd only thrown five all year, right? Yeah, Pierce and Jones come in and run the ball, had about 60 apiece. Uh, Whittemore had two catches, 47. Other guys had 30, 40 were short receiving. But uh, Bernie had seven tackles, man. He had a good night. So they had 521 total, and uh, uh, Rattler has 684 total offense. Wow. Stevenson and Major both run the ball. That Stevenson kid, he was going off. He had nearly 200 yards, man. I didn't realize could stop him. for that much yards. They could they not did. stop him. One with 186, one with 110. Yeah, I mean, look here. This dude's got 70, McGowan, Rambo, uh, Weiss. Jeez, Rambo. He's got to be good with a name like that. <laughs> I've never met anybody named Rambo that wasn't good. Two catches for 45 yards. They just, there's just too much. That, yeah. This kid right here won the game. He put a check mark by Stevenson running back Oklahoma. I mean, of course, Rattler's a QB, and he's going to get all the love and the credit. This kid run the ball, and their offense line worked their butt off. Florida's defensive front didn't have a chance. They couldn't tackle. Rattler come on and had a good year. They just had a good game, man, that, those guys. Oh, uh, I got some information. <coughs> uh, Henry finished with 250 today, 2028 wow. for the year. 2028 for old Henry. 2028. Him, man. He was. 77 yards from Eric Dickerson's record. I don't know if that'll ever be beat. That's yeah, standing for, that's going record. on 35 years now. It's got close, but nobody's ever got it. Well, there's a kid over at center. <laughs> He's about eight years old. Oh, Blue Houston. Blue Houston. It's going to set to beat Eric Dickerson's record. No blue. I've heard good things. From what we hear about the Pee Wee Football League over at center, if anybody's watching, he's the one to watch for. He's special. Blue Houston. Y'all remember that name? Blue We, we caught it here. Matt and Todd Show. Blue, if you're out there, come on in and have an interview with us when you get to <laughs> seventh grade. This the, 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 the cheer is open, buddy. Now, we have heard. We've got a more than one. I've heard it from more than one person. We've got a buddy. He, he touts him. But now, and I'll joke. He jokes with us about it. And, you know. Well, I've heard from people that don't joke. They're like, no, man, this kid's right. He'll make comments like he could start on the varsity. <laughs> and we know he's messing with us. Right. But now, in all joking, he said he's got a good shot to be the best that's ever come through these parts. And that's a lot, considering what these guys that's come through over yeah. center in the, in the yeah. 90s. And, and we hate to mention a second grader on here. But, <laughs> you know, third, whatever he's in. Yep, seventh grade, Mr. Blue, you're... Right here, son. First guest of the year when we bang that season open in two, three, four, five, six, seven, four, twenty, twenty-five. Well, I got to admit, from what I've heard, I'm looking forward to the Blue Houston. When we're in our big office space up somewhere in Birmingham, he's going to be our first guest of 2025. <laughs> uh, well, that's kind of whatever. We'll uh, 
we'll say again thanks to our sponsors, Warrior Jim, Jonathan Kim, and of course Kevin Stargell, mm -hmm. uh, Line of Landscaping, Land Service Business. Give any one of those guys a, a shot, go work out, and, and holler at Kevin if you need anything. Uh, they're definitely you people that can do anything that you need to do. Uh, we appreciate them, and we appreciate you guys again for tuning back in with us. And we're going to uh, finish with just a few minutes here with the NFL. And the last thought, we're going to move on and uh, pick her. Move on and uh, talk about next week. We'll All have right. a, yeah, we got a little more next week. Our you championship know what we game. Talk about next week. Yeah, Bama, Ohio State. I got some ways we're going to break this down. We're going to. Mm. Oh, I want to say one thing about uh, Ohio State. Uh, Fields looked amazing, and his receiver Olave looked amazing. Well, he, they were getting no pressure on him. I mean, geez. Did you, know? you see the 63 yard pass in the air mm -hmm. on the post route? I don't know how you could have covered it any better. Yeah, they're good. Batman's going to have some time trying to cover some of that, but I don't think he's going to be standing back there doing his taxes. Well, I wouldn't think so, but man, he really showed out. And it's a, I've heard from rumor mills that he's hurt. He's got a broke rib. Yeah, he got, took a hard hit. If he's got a broke rib, he ain't gonna feel too good come Miami time. And they threw the gate, they threw the guy out. Yeah, and I don't. I'm not gonna start on that. I had a two day rant on Facebook. Uh, <laughs> hey, I know what the rule is. I've known it for years. I know exactly what it is. I know exactly what it says. Unfortunately, it's only up to the interpretation of which ref decides to interpret it. What is forcible? I think it's football. If Fields don't turn himself into him, he don't take a shot in the ribs, he takes one as a normal tackle. Should he keep his head up for his safety? Absolutely. I've coached football, and I've coached kids to keep their heads up and put their shoulder across the mm -hmm. ball and work through the, the body on the tackle. I know that. But I don't see why we're throwing kids out of football games. I know that it fits I don't like under it. the protocol to toss somebody, but I didn't see any point in it. And uh, I heard some very powerful people say stop throwing them out. Yeah. Yes, a penalty. But why are you throwing them out of the ball? Take him out of the series. You know, how you can't play the rest of this drive. I mean, something why like are that. You just, you're done. Go to the locker room. We know you've worked hard. And, if and it's, you probably didn't mean to. And if it's after halftime, you're out the first half of the next game. They're going to stick you the next week. Well, that didn't help. And he did and, not. You know, they had he, a safety out. He did not hit a, a uh, helpless player. He's mm -hmm. not helpless. It was not in the head or neck area. He threw him out because it was a forcible hit. Oh, what's that mean? So Lawrence Taylor, Ray Lewis, uh, Mike Singletary, those guys could never played in today's game, right? Never. Well, it don't matter what. Let's say every one of them is targeting. Okay, they may be, but me and Matt did not agree with the ejections. Yeah. Lyle Alzado. When did you, when did you <laughs> what other game in life do you eject somebody that doesn't intentionally do something. Now, they think about it. There is some that are intentional. But as of the past five years, they've changed this rule. Kids have changed how they start hitting them. The, this rule was made to protect kids' safety, yes. Uh -huh. Right. Two, it was made to protect those receivers running across the middle, running those little post routes and turning across and throwing their hands back to the quarterback and some guy just rocking their ear hole yeah. right when they catch the ball. They're trying to stop that. You've right. seen those I'm guys like, that. remember when BB got hit? Yeah. He's laid out there on the ground. He's twitching. They're trying to stop that. Yeah. But a quarterback just running with the ball and tucks his head and lowers and turns into a guy, and you throw him out of a game because he put his head down and he's got his arms. The last game they threw him out of, he actually hit him and threw his hands into him. They still threw him out. And he's a fantastic football player, and they keep throwing him out. Two bowl games in a row. I just don't agree with the throwouts. Yeah, just bad. I don't. I mean, you know, like I said, especially, and not, any, not even intentional. You're gone. Get out. So, whatever. But somebody point out to me any other sport where something is done unintentionally and people are ejected. If it's done Name intentionally, anything. I would, I, I mean, throw, throw the kid out. If he's intentionally trying to, like, spear, gut this kid as he's, he don't even have the ball. He's running a route down the sideline, mm -hmm. and the safety just runs over there and just, I mean, just cleans his clock. Right before he catches the ball, just kills him. That's a defenseless player. Yes. You know, well, I mean, I, I am going to equate this to a shortstop fielding the pitch and throwing it over to first base and it getting out of his hands and hitting the runner. All right, you're ejected. You're out of game, shortstop. Okay, what? On, I didn't mean to. I was trying to throw the ball. It slipped out of my hand weird. It don't matter. But, oh. It don't matter. 
Yeah. Well, I block, tried to block his shot, but I hit him in the head. You're out. Yeah. It's hard to be a limb beard. You never would have played a, a play. And I got to <laughs> talk about one more rule. So if you <laughs> rush the punter, I got I, I got to talk about this one. I've been wanting to for a while, and I'll, I'll, it's a rabbit hole. But if you rush the punter and you block the kick, that's their butt. You block the kick, you get the ball, you can pick it up and run a touchdown. Wow. Uh-huh. You dive out there and you just miss that ball and you hit him, it's roughing the punter. First down. Okay. Does that make a lot of sense to y'all? What do you think they should do if they rough the punter? It's fourth and five and they go, they go punt and then they hit the punter in the leg, not even, you know, maliciously. He just falls into him. All right, now they throw the flag. They're going like to call it. start reviewing it. What would be the call, though? I mean, how would you handle the, what would be the outcome? Would it be, if they've got a punt block Re- on... Re-punt? No, I just think it... I don't know. I may be wrong on that. But it's just ironic to me. If you block it, it's good. But if you miss the block... And, you know, sometimes a guy will get a punt off and a guy will be right there and will go between his own. Oh, yeah. And they hit him and it's roughing the punter. I don't know. I don't know. Maybe... How about we just not... Unless it's malicious and just out of hand, how about we just pull that call? Yeah, forcible stuff, man. That, that it, it opened. It's too vague, and the NCAA is a joke, and everybody know. Everybody agrees on that. The NCAA, their the way they investigate teams, all colleges pay players. The ones that the big schools get away with it, we all know it. That's just another mm-hmm. whole another story we could do mm-hmm. on a side note show if we wanted to. Right. You yeah. know. All right. Okay. Uh, I'm done complaining. We we. Uh, yeah, that throwing the kids out. Just stop throwing them out. Yeah. Just just go over Please. and talk to them. Say, hey man, look, keep your head up there. You're gonna get hurt. Oh, I like you. You're a good football player. Be safe. Don't do that again. Now go over and set out this play. They do not throw the pro pro players out. After the play, you can come back in. Okay. All right, we're done. A penalty, fifteen yards, personal foul. He goes, stands out of play. Plays next plays run. All right, come back in. Now listen, buddy. Keep your head up. Be careful. I don't like that. Going out when the helmet comes off. Boy, hey, that yeah. could change your whole game. It nearly did. We've seen Cedar Bluff that night. <laughs> Man, that could change your whole game. <laughs> you get well, a third. Patrick Mahomes, your helmet come off. you got to come in while the backup comes in. And third he and two. the snap in the Super Bowl. It's third and two, and the center goes out. All right. Okay, let's <laughs> move on. All right, well, NFL, we'll drop through this, and we got, we're just right on time here. Wild card's coming the ninth. Mm-hmm. And, of course, we know the Chiefs and Bills and Steelers, they're all leading west, east, and north. The Titans... Uh, they're, in, they're in the hunt, so they're going to get the check mark here. Mm-hmm. Now, the Dolphins, Ravens, and Browns are all going to also be in there, too, depending on how they won today mm-hmm. or lost. <coughs> now, I think the Dolphins got beat. Today. They did. The Browns won. Thomas Crusick just put on there that they were, they made the playoffs. They're in. I don't know about the Ravens. I don't know I if they won, anything. if they made the playoffs. Uh, now, the Colts are kind of hanging in the fringes. And our great Atlanta Falcons and Todd's beloved 49ers did not. The Eagles, nor did the New England Patriots. And Cam Newton will not be a, a New England Patriot next year. He's will done. not. He's already gone. Right? Yeah, they're going to move on from him. He's uh, He needs to go into fashion or something. Just didn't work out. I was I, wrong there. I thought that would be a great yeah, I knew. Pick. I knew he wouldn't. He's done with football mentally. He's just not there anymore. I know what. Did he do good at all this year? Yeah, he had a few games, but there okay. at the end, he just, he's just not there anymore, man. Something's different about him. He's just mentally not a football player anymore. He's just checked out. That's fair. He's just done. As mentally as a football, he just don't want to play football. It looks like it. Just the way he stands over there, he's like a day to school chicken is gone. Looking around at the stands, and and he comes out with, you know, he talks about his suits. <laughs> He's a super great. He's one of the best athletes I've ever seen, and he's not playing football. He probably just needs to retire. I mean, you know, if somebody feels like that, they don't burn have out. passion for it anymore. I think he just don't. Yeah. I mean, nobody would think less of him for no. retiring. Andrew yeah. Luck retired early. Yeah. Just go ahead and get him. Uh, and they took so many hits. And the Packers, they were winning. We'd watched them earlier in the NFC. Uh, the Saints and Seahawks and Bucks, they're all kind of in, in the hunts. The Redskins. You're not supposed to say that, but it's our show. We can say it if we want to. You're supposed to say Washington because we'll offend the Redskins, which are my Indian heritage. I don't think they're offended by that. Uh, the Rams and the Bears. Now, on the bubble, the Cardinals and the Giants and the Cowboys. The Cowboys were no. they, 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 they were losing today. I watched them for a while. I fell asleep during that was my pizza they time. They a good record. Um, there are going to be teams in there with a very bad record. Yeah, they extended it to seven this year. Remember, they added a 
a team in where they can play a little another team. So. See, I don't agree with that. I don't, why, why? Just to give them another chance. More teams, more chances. Another game. Money. Because they're hemorrhaging at the seams right now. They're just not doing good. All right, Heisman Trophy's coming on. It'll Wait. be on Tuesday night, Heisman Trophy. Devontae Smith's going to be your winner. Uh, Mac Jones going to be there. Lawrence and, finished third. Harris did finish second. Um, Trask will be there. He'll, I think he's going to get an invite. Well, they're not going to go anywhere. They're actually going to be at home on their on their uh, laptops doing virtual. It, what? Wait just a second. Up in New York, uh, so. I'd say it's a one hundred and ten. <coughs> I'm going to be shocked if Smith don't bring this home. They pretty much let the cat out of the bag. I yeah. mean, there was a guy yesterday because he that, played good against Notre saw, Dame. He say, had a good game. Well, I'm not going to say who I voted for, but if I vote for Smith, I'll blink twice in the next 10 minutes. <laughs> so, I mean, come on, man. Uh, and Mike Jones had a great year, and I assure you of just seeing the interviews with him and have watching him in the past grow up at Alabama. Uh, I've seen him at camps. He is very humble. Mike Jones is a good kid. He, he is not mad if Devontae wins that, trust oh, me. Oh, Lord, no. Uh, he's not going to be. A, he'll be the opportunity. he'll be the first one to hug his neck. I promise you. Well, I think right now we were talking about that the other day. The game so slowed down for Smith. He's just oh, playing on another level. It is the Florida game. He just went I nuts. I mean, it's just easy for him right now. Catching the ball, running after he catches. And the it. big games, he's playing crazy good. He probably can't even explain why he's playing good. He just sees it's the ball. Just <laughs> he's just seeing the ball, and Mac throws a good ball. Um, 98% of the time by his QBR rating. So, uh, he does throw a good ball. Tune in next week, guys. We're going to do a breakdown between Northwestern and how they played Auburn and how Ohio State played them and how Alabama could play oh, yeah. the team because we've, we've played got a little bit to go. Alabama and Auburn's played and Northwestern and Ohio State played. And mm -hmm. I'm going to try to go through some of that and give us an idea we'll of how the matchup see what we got here. Teams out. Where they're better. I don't know if they're better anywhere, but uh, I don't know. We'll just have to see. Stop Ohio State's explosive plays, get some pressure up front. Bama's always been good at that because they've been able to play man on the edges and they can blitz up front, right? They mm -hmm. can send an extra guy. Um, and <clears throat> Battles has played better. Uh, Jordan Battle, they bring him a lot, don't they? Yeah, Christian Harrison had a fantastic game against Notre Dame. He was my MVP. I was really proud of him, man. He's a good player. He's a good he player. Had a, he had a good night. And, he, uh, it had been some games he'd been spotty, but. Their defense has improved a lot. Yeah. And it'll have to be improved versus Ohio State. Yeah, Moses got to get another gear, man. He's going to have to put 20 pounds on and get some yeah. get some grind uh, to him. You know, that injury, probably. I saw where he made 70 tackles this year, about six a game. But uh, yeah, I would have seen him to have. Effective, but he's, he's probably a little slower. I'd send him to have a hundred tackles this year. Mm. I just, I just would have. So, yeah. we'll break all that down next week, and we'll have a little bit more local basketball from kind of what's going on. Yeah. And Diamond Dean will be starting to get into his uh, wheelhouse of NCAA basketball. <laughs> yeah. ACC kicked off. Kentucky won in uh, oh, double yeah. overtime. Alabama upset Tennessee, seventy-one to sixty-three. Tennessee Good game. was ranked number seven. Good game. Kentucky won their second game in double overtime. Double overtime. And Kid come off the bench and scored twenty squat. <laughs> a guy that they've really pushed to, for. Now I'm not going to get on a Calipari kick, but he hasn't been playing, and the fans have been just adamant that he played. Adamant that he played. Well, he put him in yesterday. He scored 23, but right, he yeah. got kicked out of the game. Calipari did. Yeah, he said that's what led to them winning. They yeah. got fired up. <laughs> so what? <laughs> uh, he would. Uh, he would say that. So we'll start getting into that after college is over. Uh, that's his wheelhouse, and I'll get into some recruiting stuff where kids are coming out of high school, where they're going to land college. And of course, we'll keep up with our local basketballs. We go through the end of January and first of February, and won't be long. Some area baseball stuff will be kicking off. We'll talk to a few baseball players here and there, and, and uh, we got good stuff, man. We're going to stay busy through the winter, and uh, we we'll have plenty yeah, of stuff to do. Yeah, we we'll have plenty of stuff. March Madness may be April Madness. They may push it a month, so don't be surprised. May <laughs> yeah, they may. So just uh, I, right now they're getting put. They're getting the play. Yeah, I mean. tune in Tuesday night, and uh, we'll we'll have something out on the page. We think Smith's gonna win it, so that's kind of our take. Yeah, yeah, I would have said. Yeah, so y'all have a good night. We love y'all and do appreciate it. And uh, keep your heads clear. Happy New Year. Keep your hearts full of God and your heads clear, and we'll uh, 
We'll catch y'all next week. See you in a week. Peace.